Continuation, Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 7, page 143. Testimony of Jerry in prison from the 21st of April 2016 to the 3rd of June 2016. When we read the Bible, we see the apostles going into prison and coming out, and at times we think that ministers of today do not go through anything of the kind. The way the church has been taught in this century is that if a minister goes into prison, he is not anointed. It is because of our immaturity. I had moved to Glasgow from Manchester, and I was trying to sort out my immigration status in the United Kingdom. According to the law of the land, I had overstayed. Everything I was doing was just being hindered by the enemy, the devil. And on April the 21st, 2016, as I was going to the immigration office at the festival court in Govan, Glasgow, to update them on what I was doing to regularize my status in the United Kingdom, they said to me that they were going to detain me. Initially, I thought it was a misunderstanding, and since it was Friday, I thought that by Monday everything would be resolved. I remember that morning when I walked into the immigration office for what was supposed to be a ten-minute appointment to update them on my efforts to sort things out, the Lord told me, You will be numbered with the transgressors. I did not truly really pay attention at first, only when they told me that I was to be detained. That is when I realized what the Lord meant. They took me into a room, and I had to wait for the van to come and pick me up to transfer me to the detention center. As I was in that room, I said to myself, When Paul and Silas were in prison, they sang unto the Lord. So I started singing and dancing for the four hours I was locked up in that room. The immigration agents could see me dancing and hear me singing because they had cameras in that room. Two of them came into the room, a man and a woman. They said, You are taking it well. You are even dancing and singing. I said, That is what Christians do when they are thrown into prison. Then they said to me, I think your case is not a big deal. By Monday you can be out of that detention centre. I called Sister Louise so that she could call her sister Sharon Hunt, who is an immigration lawyer, and I texted the church members to tell them that I was not going to be there on Sunday, but definitely I would be back during the following week. I did not want to alarm them for no reason. The van came and picked me up for transfer. It was 4 p.m. We drove to the Dungaval Detention Centre in South Lanarkshire. They processed me after 7 p.m. on that Friday, 21st of April 2016. I was placed in the London House, room L18. The room had 18 beds and I was given bed number 8. I could make some calls on Saturday to inform friends and church members where I was. Uncle Kamalafi, a wonderful Methodist minister and friend of the ministry, from the very day he heard I was detained by the immigration, phoned all the police stations in Glasgow looking for me. I have never seen such love and care from anybody that the love Uncle Kamalafi and his family has shown toward me. I did not eat for the first five days and nights. Then I heard a voice in my heart as a gentle whisper saying to me, This captivity is for a long time. Eat and get some strength. That is not what I wanted to hear from the Holy Ghost. So I ate something on the fifth day at lunch and dinner. Then I went again for three days and three nights without food and water. I was able to send an email to Angela in South Korea on my second day in detention, telling her what was going on, and she got 200 pastors in South Korea to pray for me, and other pastors also in China were praying the moment Angela informed them of my captivity. The House of Prayer for All Nations also prayed and fasted. When you read in the Bible that the church prayed when Peter was in prison, you think it does not happen today. 
Let me tell you the church prayed when Jerry, the prisoner and apostle of Jesus Christ for the fifty European nations, was in prison in Dungaval, numbered among the transgressors. All the disciples of Hopfan matured during my imprisonment. When they noticed that I was not eating, the medical justice got involved and people were thinking I was on a hunger strike. That was very bad publicity for Dungaval and the immigration. They threatened to transfer me to another centre with a facility for disabled people. I told them I was doing what happened to the Jews in the book of Esther, and I was doing Esther 9, so that on the day the Home Office would want to carry out its evil decree, the opposite would happen, and I would prevail against their decree, even their removal order. Pastors in Glasgow wrote wonderful letters of support, and the lawyer did his best, but the immigration did not want to consider any of those letters. They cancelled my flight ticket to deport me to the Congo twice. In the end, the lawyer said to me he could not do anything for me, and the advocate also said to me he could not do anything for me. I met a wonderful pastor, Joseph, in Dungaval. He was also a detainee, and he truly helped me, and we defended ourselves without any lawyer. I am forever grateful to Pastor Joseph for his help. God put him there just to help me. We understood exactly that it was the devil fighting the ministry. He wanted to strike the shepherd and the sheep would be scattered. They had planned to deport me for the third time on the 1st of June 2016, but on that same day the letter came that cancelled that deportation and granted my release from Dungaval. This Esther was literally fulfilled, as I had prayed and fasted for. They had to process my papers again, and it took some days, so on June the 3rd, 2016, I was released from Dungaval after 42 days in detention. I needed a time with the Lord. For about three years, God had been asking me to come and seek His face for the next level of the ministry. But I always said to God, I am very busy. I travel every weekend to Glasgow. I cannot afford to miss a single weekend in Glasgow. But I was able to stay there for 42 days. During that time, the Lord spoke to me and ministered to me and renewed my strength. He pruned me some more. I had become indifferent to some aspects of the Word of God. I was also dealing with bitterness. I was bitter toward the church I was working with prior to starting Hopfan, the way they treated me, spitefully used me and abused me in ministry. The Holy Spirit told me, You have forgiven them, but you are still bitter. You need to let go of it. He said to me, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4 verse 31 to 32 I have taught in the Perfect Redemption Plan series that one of the symbols of the Holy Ghost was a dove. God wanted to tell us that the dove is a bird that has no bile in it. Thus there is no bitterness in the Holy Ghost. Therefore, if we want to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are but manifestations of the Holy Ghost, we need to deal with our bitterness. Now it was time for me to make the word flesh in me, not just forgive them and not be angry any longer, but also no longer be bitter toward that ministry. I said out loud in my room, Lord, I choose to forgive that church and ministry. I choose to forgive their leaders, for they do not know what they are doing, and I will no longer be bitter towards them. When I came out of prison, I wrote an eight-page letter to the general overseer of that ministry, explaining in love what went wrong and how I was treated while working under their ministry. I forgave them in Christ, and I was no longer bitter either, for God told me to put away my bitterness. 
and the first opportunity I had when I came out of prison, I went to Manchester and fellowshiped in their church, and after that I went to London to attend one of the programs the general overseer of that ministry was doing. I never received an official apology from anybody in that ministry, but I was not looking for an apology. I confronted their ways in love and chose to forgive them and move on as commanded by the Holy Ghost. Forgiveness is a choice we make, to obey the command of God to forgive as Christ also has forgiven us, not an emotionally based decision. You will never feel like forgiving people, so choose to forgive anyway. If we say we have truly forgiven and are no longer bitter, we will pursue peace with our brothers and sisters and seek to restore fellowship and holiness, without which we will not be able to see God move on our behalf. Hebrews 12 verse 14 That is why I went to see them face to face and to fellowship in their church, both in Manchester and in London. Brothers and sisters, we are called for peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful, Colossians 3 verse 15. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God, Matthew 5 verse 9. Let us act as children of God, it does not matter who is wrong, love reaches out to others and seeks peace. While I was in prison, after two weeks I said to myself, Jerry, you wrote the Perfect Redemption Plan Part 1 and going through fire Bible studies. Now it is time for you to act like a mature son of God. So I applied for a job while in there. They gave me the job of preparing the bags of new detainees, giving them cutlery, towels, toothbrush, toothpaste, toilet rolls, soap, comb and cleaning the reception where all the detainees were processed. Truly, I was like Joseph that was put in charge of the other prisoners. The officer said to me, We do not give that job to anybody easily, but you are different. There is something about you. You always respect yourself and respect others and encourage others. So we think you will be good for that job. When Mummy Balligan, Uncle Kumalafi, Auntie Kumalafi, Sister Fumaleo and Sister Yutundi visited me in there, they were holding back their tears and I had to encourage them. I told them, I have found a job here. I am being paid one pound per hour. I could see that their hearts were in pain. The word has to be made flesh in us so that people may see how to apply the word of God in their life. Papa Peer and Mama Dodi Mungumbi also visited and later on they opened the door of their house to me when I came out of prison and many other friends and pastor friends visited me there. This brought joy into my heart and great encouragement. After two weeks in there, I said to myself, Jerry, what would Paul, the apostle and prisoner of Jesus Christ, do when he was in prison? I said, he would not just do what Joseph did, but he would preach the gospel. So, I went to the church in Dungavel and started to hold church services every day. Pastor Joseph would take three evening services a week. I would take three evening services. I would also do the prayer meeting on Friday. We had church every day. Many Muslims came to Christ. Many people received the call of the Lord to go and preach the gospel in their nation or in the city they were released into by the immigration. Some of the gods gave their lives to Christ and they were always informing us about the evil plans of the immigration to remove one of the Christians in the middle of the night when everybody was sleeping and take them straight to the airport. They were spying for us so that we would pray against the plans of the immigration and we would inform our lawyers to be watchful with a dirty trick the immigration was going to carry out during the weekend at night when the solicitor is not working. Many drug addicts and drug dealers gave their lives to Christ. 
Christians had so many testimonies of deliverance from immigration that even Muslims were asking for our prayers and were coming to church. It was an integrated church. Black, white, yellow, brown and mixed races were worshipping together. There was no denomination. We came in the unity of faith and encouraged one another and prayed for one another. Trouble has no skin color or denomination, and it is time for the church outside of prison to understand it and stop segregating the church of God. I wrote the Bible study on the Lord is my shepherd in the Perfect Redemption Plan Part 3. But in Dungaval, Pastor Joseph gave me an understanding of particular scriptures on shepherding that I did not have prior to my going into prison. He said, there are many men and women of God, but very few men and women for God. What does it mean? In John 10, we have the hireling who is not a true shepherd, for when he sees the wolf coming after the sheep, he leaves him. He does not want to fight for the sheep at the peril of his own life. What he is interested in is his own agenda, his salary, and bearing the title of man or woman of God and receiving the honor that goes with it. But he or she is not willing to suffer with Jesus so that he or she can reign with him. For if we suffer with Jesus, we will also reign with him. 2 Timothy 2 verse 12 when Jesus, the commander of hosts of heaven, appeared to Joshua, Joshua asked him, Are you for us or for our enemies? He answered, I am on the Lord's side. Therefore, if you side with the Lord and his agenda to further his kingdom, I, Jesus, will be for you, Joshua. Joshua 5, verse 13 to 14. Paul explained that he came to understand that the chains and the imprisonment he went through contributed to the furtherance of the gospel. Philippians 1 verse 12 So that when people read his stories, they became heroic accounts and thus encouraged many Christians around the world to stand for the truth of the gospel. If you are a man or woman for God, you will see the need of the people around you and you will forget about yourself and your own pain and minister to the people around you. I explained in the Lord is my shepherd of the Perfect Redemption Plan series of Bible studies that Jesus, even when he was on the cross, bleeding to death, he still ignored his own condition and pain to minister salvation to the thief on the cross with him. Now, Jerry, it is time for you to apply the ways of God you have written in those Bible studies. What I also learned from Pastor Joseph is that the shepherd smells like the sheep. There is no such thing as a shepherd who does not smell like the sheep, meaning you must go through some of the things that your sheep go through, so that you do not just quote the scriptures to them, but you know the feelings of their infirmities or weaknesses too. Because you yourself went through the same thing and came out victorious. Paul tells us of Jesus Christ that he went through the same things we the sheep go through, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Hebrews 4 verse 15 Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 to 4 some pastors became Muslim in that detention center because they thought that God had forsaken them. The psychologist said to me, So prayer and fasting is part of your spiritual life, and encouraging others or helping others is what defines you and who you truly are. Even when you yourself are going through the same troubles they are going through, but you forget for a moment what you are going through to help and encourage someone else. So your faith in Christ is really the rock that makes you stand firm and be strong for others. Yet 
The same lady psychologist said to me, do not be offended, but do you not feel that you being here means that your God has forsaken you? I replied, Paul went into prison and all the apostles of Jesus went into prison. The fact that I am in prison does not mean that Jesus has forsaken me. He promised never to leave me nor forsake me, so that I may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear. What can man or woman behind the immigration system do unto me? Hebrews 13, verse 5 to 6 We used to pray twice a week with my brother, Nell Melanda, so now being in prison with no internet connection, making international phone calls would cost me a fortune. But we understood what the devil was trying to do. Remember in the book of Daniel, Daniel understood by reading the Bible that the time for the deliverance of all the Jews from the Babylonian Empire had come, so he started to pray and fast, so that the will of God would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And in the spirit realm there was the principality over Persia that was resisting the angels of the Lord, like the archangel Gabriel, to bring answers to prayers. The enemies of the Jews wrote a decree that forbade people to pray for thirty days to any god except the gold statue of the king they had erected. But Daniel, a man of understanding of the reality of the spirit, continued to pray regardless of that decree, and they put him into the lion's den. We understood it was our prayers that were disturbing the devil. That is why he threw me into prison and escalated everything to get me deported, even on Sunday when lawyers do not work. Do not be fooled. There are principalities over every nation that resist the gospel of Jesus and want to keep the people in captivity forever. Our gospel troubles those principalities and the devil. So I was spending about a hundred pounds every week for the international phone calls to France so that we can pray every day with my brother for at least one hour. There are 300,000 families to be saved in Glasgow and millions of souls in the 50 European nations. The devil knows it. And that is why he's trying to kill the baby, even Hopfan in its crib, like he tried to kill Moses as a baby by ordering all the Hebrews to throw their newborn male child into the Nile River. Exodus 1 verse 22. He also tried to kill Jesus as a baby by ordering all babies from one day old to two years old to be killed. Matthew 2 verse 16. The devil and his agents, even the magicians in the spirit realm, saw the star appearing, even the mark of Christ the Saviour and Deliverer of the oppressed arising. Matthew 2 verse 1 to 2 So he wanted to kill him. Herod or Pharaoh were just agents of Satan to kill the church that God is building by killing the messengers God sends. As John explains it to us, saying, The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and of the seven golden lampstands, is this. The seven stars are the angels or messengers of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Revelation 1 verse 20 So, in other words, Moses was the messenger that God used to go and build the church in the wilderness, even the tabernacle of meeting, according to the pattern that God showed him on the mountain of Horeb. Exodus 25 verse 40 and Hebrews 8 verse 5 John the Baptist was the messenger who prepared the way before Jesus, who is the messenger of the new covenant. Malachi 3 verse 1 and that is why those who are in the fivefold ministries, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, have a spiritual star over their heads as a messenger of a particular church God wants to build. The devil and the angels of God see that star over that minister, and depending on the call of God over that person, or the number of spiritual talents Jesus has bestowed upon that messenger, the star will be brighter than other stars. Paul tells us, There is one glory of the sun, 
and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 41 now, Jesus Christ is the son of righteousness, according to Malachi 4.2. The moon is a church that reflects the glory of the sun, and the stars are the messengers to different churches. According to Exodus 18, some people will be leaders in charge of tens, others in charge of fifty, others in charge of hundreds, others in charge of thousands, and there would be others in charge of a whole tribe, and others like Moses and his leadership team in charge of a whole nation. Jeremiah was a prophet to the nations, whereas Ezekiel was a prophet to only the nation of Israel, Jeremiah 1 verse 10, and Ezekiel 3 verse 5 and 17. Our star differs in brightness depending on what God has ordained us to do from our mother's womb. Yet we are not to envy each other. God placed those abilities in us from our mother's womb, and as long as we abide in our calling and are faithful to our call, he will tell us, Well done, good and faithful servant. Matthew 25 verse 23 my prayer is that we will understand what the will of God is concerning our life and what he has called us to do individually and collectively. There is a general will of God and general predestination for all Christians to be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. On top of that, there is an individual predestination or call of God for each one of us from our mother's womb. We need to discover it and go after it. We ought to pray for those who are in leadership. We can see throughout the Bible Satan targets primarily apostles and prophets because they are the foundation of the church and Jesus bestows a kingdom or sphere of influence upon them. Luke 22 verse 29 1 Corinthians 9 verse 2 2 Corinthians 10 verse 15 and Ephesians 2 verse 19 to 20. Jesus told the Jews, So you testify that you approve of what your ancestors did. They killed the prophets, and you build their tombs. Because of this, God in his wisdom said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill, and others they will persecute. Luke 11 verse 48 to 49. Therefore, brothers and sisters, pray for those who are in leadership in church. Do not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Jesus taught Peter, saying, Simon, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. He will shake your life and turn it upside down, blow a strong wind of opposition against you, so that your faith will fail altogether. Luke 22 verse 31 He knows I have bestowed the kingdom upon you, and you are going to be a pillar in the church that I am building, so that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Matthew 16 verse 15 to 19 and Galatians 2 verse 9 So, Simon, I am advising you to watch and pray, so that you will not fall into that temptation of giving up this Christian walk altogether, because of the strong wind of opposition the devil sends your way to shake your life. I know that in your spirit you are willing to watch and pray, but you have a problem with your flesh that is weak. I am advising you to always pray and not lose heart, and to watch and pray with me for at least one hour, what I am saying to you, I am also saying to all Christians to do the same. Luke 18, verse 1 to 8, Matthew 26, verse 40 to 41, and Mark 13, verse 37. Also remember, Peter, that there are some demons that only go away from you by prayer and fasting. Mark 9, verse 29. Daniel was given the skills to understand what was happening in the spirit realm. 
As long as he was fasting and making prayers, even for those twenty-one days, the principality over Persia was defeated by Michael, our prince or our godly principality, and then the answer came on the twenty-fourth day. Daniel 10 Peter made light of the warning of Jesus. I think it was because he was spiritually blind and could not see what the devil was up to in the spirit realm. So Jesus said to Peter, Since you cannot even watch and pray with me for at least one hour to prevent yourself from falling into temptation, I have seen in the realm of the Spirit that you will fall away, and even deny me three times, that you do not know me, and all of you, my disciples, will do the same, and forsake me. As it is written, Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But, after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Matthew 26, verse 31 to 34. This is so true, because when I was in prison, some of my disciples wrote me off. Some were ashamed of my chains and did not want to be associated with me any more. What Paul said to Timothy, May the Lord show mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. 2 Timothy 1 verse 16 This has become true in my life as well. At my first defence, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it, and I was delivered from the lion's mouth. 2 Timothy 4 verse 16 to 17 I have learned to forgive, like Paul forgave the people who deserted him, including John Mark, the nephew of Barnabas, and one day, if they decide to come back, my heart is always open to receive and welcome them. After the resurrection of Jesus, the Holy Spirit was poured upon us. He is the Spirit of grace and of prayer, of supplication, according to Zechariah 12.10. Now God can work in us both to give us the willingness and empower us supernaturally to pray for his good pleasure, though our flesh be weak. Philippians 2 verse 13 It is no longer by our might or our power, even human effort, that we are able to watch and pray, but by the Spirit of the Lord, even the Spirit of grace and prayer, that we are willing and energized to watch and pray without ceasing. Zechariah 4 verse 6 and 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16 to 18. I thank everybody who stood with me, even those who were scattered because of the persecution I went through. Leaders were born during that period of trial, and some, though they have the call of God on their life, fell away. I pray that they will be restored and continue to do ministry, even if it is not with us, but God has a field for them to work in. That testing period also sent away those who were fearful and those who could not ascribe the glory to God. Deuteronomy 20 verse 8 and Judges 7 The true leaders of Hophan were born. They truly believed in the vision God has given unto us, and contrary to hope, they believed in hope, for they judged God who had promised those things faithful to also carry them out. Romans 4 verse 18 and Hebrews 11 verse 11. When I was in Dungaval, I cursed it so that it would close down after I'd come out of it. And on September the 8th, 2016, the Home Office announced the closing down of Dungaval toward the end of 2017 because of the inhumane conditions. My friend, prayer works. 
I cursed it with all my heart and commanded it to be closed. People were screaming all night and some were cutting themselves, banging their head against the walls, etc. It was barbaric and inhumane in there. Even Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Prisons has criticised Dungaval Detention Facility, as has the recent independent report on welfare and detention by Stephen Shaw. But, being there, truly defined who I was in Christ Jesus. I am an apostle, preacher and prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. I had a vision in August 2016, and in that vision I was in Dungaval, and the manager of the place was giving letters of release to detainees. Everybody was gathered in the conference room, and she would read out loud the letter of release of the detainee. I was the last one, and she read my letter of release. She said, Jerry Melanda, the preacher of the gospel, has been released and everybody clapped their hands in that conference room. Then I heard the voice of God saying to me, Jerry, I rejoice over you with clapping, for now I know that you are my preacher and messenger. You did not serve me and preach my word only in good times and comfortable situations, but even in prison you continued to preach my word and lead people to Christ. On October the 2nd, 2016, I was tired and exhausted, both emotionally and physically, from fighting with the home office, and I wanted to give up the ministry altogether. Then I had a vision. In that vision, I went to the florist. I was looking for flowers to buy. Many people came in and bought flowers for their spouse, and a homosexual couple also entered into that shop and bought flowers. I was distracted in that shop, and as I was about to leave the florist's shop, one of the women in that shop said to me, I've taken your shoes of many colours. Wow, such beautiful shoes in gold, purple and blue. It'll fit my purpose. You can take these sandals instead, and I will also give you my wedding ring, so that if you sell that wedding ring, you can make money. Now, at that time... I was really thinking about marriage, but because of immigration I refused to get married, even though in my heart I was tired of living alone and doing ministry alone. And I repeatedly said to the Home Office that I would never get married to get an immigration status in the United Kingdom. One day I will get married. It will certainly not be because of immigration, but only because of love. So the devil was trying to tempt me so that I would just marry any Christian woman and move on with my life and forget about ministry altogether. And in the vision I became indifferent to the sinful lifestyle around me, whether people were practicing homosexuality or living in fornication or practicing any other sin leading to death, I was indifferent. I was now just minding my own business, serving my God for me and my family alone, instead of reaching out to the lost souls. The devil was telling me, Why do you make things so difficult, Jerry? Can you not just do like everybody? I tell you to read the Bible study of He Kept the Good Wine for the End. Not only are we not to marry unbelievers, or live in fornication and have children out of wedlock, but we are only supposed to marry born-again Christians. Yet, in marrying that born-again Christian without defiling the marriage bed, our love should be without hypocrisy or hidden motives. And when you are in ministry, it is not only that you should have pure motives and that the person is born again, but on top of that, that person must be the bone of your bone, not just the flesh of your flesh meaning that person must be ordained by God from the foundation of the world for the two of you to do God's plan of furthering the kingdom of the Son of His love, Jesus. The devil wanted me to drop everything and be a normal Christian. I know a pastor that was with me in Dungaval. He was traumatized by that experience. We had to minister to him there. He never ministered to anybody while in Dungaval. When he came out, 
he left his church, where he was an assistant pastor, and went to another church in Glasgow to be an ordinary member. When I talked to him, he said, I need ministration myself, so why should I minister to others when I have many problems? I will sit down and let others minister to me. That is what the devil wants us to do. The shoes are to spread the gospel of peace and also talk about our inheritance or sphere of influence in the gospel. Ephesians 6 verse 15 God gave some of us not just a robe of many colors like Joseph, but also shoes of many colors, yet we do not realize it. Please read the Bible study on Come Home. In it we explain that the shoes that the father placed back on the feet of the prodigal son talked about his inheritance being restored. Joseph, who received the coat of many colors from his father, was to rule not only over the kingdom of Egypt, the greatest power of their days, but also all the nations around Egypt would submit to him. As it is written, all the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph, because the famine was severe everywhere. Genesis 41 verse 57 Now, the shoes of many colors talk about preaching the gospel and having a sphere of influence in many nations and kingdoms as inheritance from God. Psalm 2 verse 7 to 9 says, I will declare the decree of Jehovah. He has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I shall give the nations for your inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, in our case, you remember the vision of me coming out of the swimming pool on the day before my water baptism with a rod of iron in my right hand. Around the round swimming pool were fifty men holding a rod with a flag of a European nation. They all prostrated before me, their face to the ground and the rod of their flag on the ground too. This is what is at stake here, the 300,000 families in Glasgow and the 50 European nations. But it does not stop there. Just like the whole world came to buy grain from Joseph because of the famine, there is also a famine of hearing the word of God, for there is not yet a widespread revelation of the word of God, and the whole world will come and buy from us without money the revelation of the word of God that God gave us through these my weekly milk Bible studies. 1 Samuel 3 verse 1, Amos 8 verse 11, and Isaiah 55 verse 1. I was so tired and wanted to just live a mediocre Christian life, warm the church pews, sit down and let other people preach to me. I did not realize the kind of shoes God had given unto Hopfan, and in my ignorance the devil wanted to give us mere sandals. Then, in that same vision, I heard the voice of my good friend and prayer partner, Reverend Henry Manuel, praying and telling me, What about the 300,000 families? You said God has 300,000 families to save in Glasgow. Then, I heard the voice of the Holy Ghost groaning within me with sounds that I could not utter. My heart was in pain and I was weeping. I thought I was the one in heart pain and weeping, but no tear was coming out of my eyes. It was as if someone else was living inside me, and that person was having pain in his heart and was weeping with groaning that I could not utter because he was heartbroken. I could feel all that person inside me was feeling. My heart was in pain as when someone has been betrayed by a spouse. There are things that I cannot explain with words. I could feel the wetness of the tears running profusely down my eyes, but there were no physical tears when I touched my face. I would hear that person of the Holy Ghost weeping in pain with groaning. It was as if someone was weeping next door, and I put my ear against that door to hear everything being uttered in that room. 
I have experienced groanings of the Holy Ghost before, as I have explained in the Bible study David Sexual Sin Exposed, but this time around it was different. I could feel the person of the Holy Ghost in me. It was as if I was possessed by the Holy Ghost and my body, which is hosting him, was feeling everything he felt. As it is written of Gideon that the Spirit of the Lord possessed him, Judges 6 verse 34. Now, a ghost is an apparition of a dead person, which is believed to appear or become manifest to the living. Now, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of the dead person of Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead. Romans 8 verse 11. More and more you will hear me say Holy Ghost instead of Holy Spirit. Why? Because I want all of us to understand that the Spirit of the Lord is a person. He feels pain. He is grieved, heartbroken, angry, displeased, pleased, etc. In the application of the perfect redemption plan of God, we talk about being possessed by the Holy Ghost, not just acting as an oracle of the Lord, but being an oracle of the Lord. This is my prayer for all of us. O oh, Holy Ghost, Spirit of the resurrected Christ, take possession of my body from today so that I can be your oracle. Let me feel what you feel, think the way you think, and see the world with your eye. A day before that vision, on October the 1st, 2016, I was coming back to Glasgow from Manchester. As I sat in that virgin train, the Lord Holy Ghost said to me, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 to 14 In my anger and frustration I said to him, Prove it by delivering me today, for my earthly parents love me, and they deliver me out of my troubles. So prove your love today. I did not hear a thing. But that scripture was burning in my heart, so I just prayed. Towards the end of October 2016, I had a vision, and in that vision the Holy Ghost told me, Dig a trench outside your window, and fill it with milk. For you shall not see rain nor wind, but the whole valley in which you dug a trench will be filled with milk for you, instead of being filled with water. This is what we call prophetic actions. We explain them in length in the application of the Perfect Redemption Plan series. God instructed his prophet Elisha in 2 Kings 3, 13-19, after the hand of the Lord came upon him, to ask the kings to dig trenches in the valley, and they shall not see rain nor wind, but in the morning the valley would be filled with water. And this is a simple thing for God to do. In my case, instead of water, it'll be filled with milk, meaning God is causing me to enjoy the promised land flowing with milk and honey, and giving me houses, vineyards and wells in this land of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Exodus 3 verse 17, Deuteronomy 6 verse 10 to 11. So, I went to the local grocery shop and bought one litre of whole milk and came back home, dug a small trench in the ground by my window and filled it with that whole milk. Then I prophesied the word of God over it. And on the 15th of November 2016, the Home Office sent me a letter that my application was successful and I have been granted a residence permit. So the next day I went to do my biometrics and picture for the residence permit. And after that, I started to inform all the friends and pastors who prayed with me and for me while I was in prison that God has delivered me. We always ought to pray and not give up. God showed us the powers that were resisting us so that we could bind them. My prayer is that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened and our spiritual ears will be opened. Our battle is not against flesh and blood or against individuals. Paul tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6 verse 12 our spiritual eyes need to be open so that God will show us what is actually resisting us and resisting the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus. There are demons who spiritually blind people's eyes so that they will not see the glory of the gospel of Jesus that is able to save them. It is as if the devil put a veil over their face to blind them and also a veil over their heart, so that even when they hear the gospel, it is not bringing conviction of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. John 16 verse 8 Paul, who was once spiritually blind to the glory of the gospel of Christ by religion, for the devil through religion placed spiritual scales in his eyes to prevent him from seeing the glory of this gospel that saves souls, explained some spiritual realities to us. Acts 9 verse 18 Paul tells us, If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Why? Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the mind of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand the message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 NLT and Jesus tells us, if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Mark 3 verse 26 to 27, NRV. Some Christians think that demons will be fighting each other and forget about us altogether, so that way we can sneak up on them and plunder the souls that they retain captive. That is being ignorant. Satan is in unity with all his demons. They do not fight or oppose each other. Take it from the very mouth of Jesus, for if they do so, their kingdom will not stand. So the devil comes into the church and among Christians to work and causes us to fight and oppose each other to cripple the advancement of the kingdom of God. If we want the people saved, healed, delivered, we must confront the devil, knock down the gates of hell, bind Satan and his demons hand and foot, strip them naked. Colossians 2 verse 13 to 15 And then we plunder all the souls they had detained for all those years, deliver households, deliver cities, deliver nations and continents. Jesus told us, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 18 verse 18 I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He was kicked out of heaven according to Revelation 12. Now he is cast down to earth, and you too should kick him out of your life, out of your household, out of your city, out of your nation, and out of your continent. That is why I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Luke 10 verse 18 to 19. To be continued.